Welcome back on Dynamod. Today I want to propose you a video about uh, the realm of Battles Focus. That is a focus about the realms that you can find in the Jana Handbook 2020 and are going to substitute the rules that you can find in the Malian Sorcery 1. So remember that you apply this. And moreover, you have to remember that when you start to play, you have to choose the realm where the battle will be in. So you will apply the rules for the real sphere magic, the realmscape feature, and you will have the realm command. Instead, about the artifact, you can take it, but you have the option to take it only if you declare in your rooster that it comes from that realm and you will not have any more access to the artifacts that are on the Malin Sorcery book. So remember that there is such a distinction. So the artifact, if you come from that realm, inside the other things, if you play in that realm. So it's a little difference, but it's quite important. And we can start analyzing the realms from the Akshi, so the realm of fire. And everything about this realm, it's about doing damages. It's really based on damages. And we can see this from the magic, that it's the realm sphere magic, that it's fireball. That let you wave a 5 plus if successfully cast, pick one enemy unit within 18 inch, invisible to the caster. And if that enemy has composed by one model, it suffers one mortal wound. From two to nine model, D3 mortal wounds, 10 or more models, D6 mortal wounds. So quite an aggressive spell. But the part about the realm sketch features, it's not less. In fact, we have that every shenic elements, every shenery that you have on the field as the rule volcanic, that it's the third that you can find in this genre handbook 2020 about the negative effects. In fact, it says that at the start of each hero phase, so each player one, you roll a dice for each volcanic tiny feature, so all the ones, and on a six, each unit within one inch of that terrain feature suffered the three mortal wounds. So it means that it's really quite an aggressive and quite explosive realm where to play, because you can have quite a lot more wounds from the table itself than from the opponent. Really quite interesting. And the artifact about this realm, it's incandescent rich blade and it's a classic. You can pick one of the billion melee weapon to substitute with this artifact and if they are modified hit roll for an attack made by this weapon, it's 6, the attack scores 2 hits on the target instead of 1 and you can make the wound normally as usual. So it's really quite interesting because it can eventually double some of your attacks. So not bad at all, I suggest you to use this artifact on a mod that has a lot of attacks to use, so at least it can make it more valuable, and surely it's quite interesting one to choose. And then we have the realm command one, that it's blazing fervor, that if you use this command ability, you can do this at the start of your hero phase, and if you do so, pick one friendly unit wholly within 12 inch of a friendly hero, so every hero that you have, and add one to run and charge rows made for that unit until your next hero phase. And the same unit cannot benefit of this command ability more than once for each phase. So it's uh, really good because uh, at least you can't uh, make it doubled and so on, so you gain quite a lot of amount for charging or so on. So it's good, it's a good bonus. It's better when applied with units with, anyway, armies that can charge after I've run, so it's quite interesting in that case. And then we can move on Shaman, the realm of metal. And here we have quite a saving realm, so it's quite opposite to the fire one of Akshi. And we have, in fact, the magic of realm sphere, that it's metamorphic wording, that Liu with a casting value of 7 plus, pick one friendly unit wholly within 12 inch of the cast invisible to it, and add one to zeros for attacks that target that unit until the start of your next zero phase. So it's really quite good to make a better saving a specific unit. So 
it's something to take note if you are going to play on metal. Then we have the Iridium Escape feature that it's transmutative lens that make the terrain features and also it includes the faction ones. It's also for all the ones I forget before, but it's all the terrains, remember all the ones, and they gain entangling scenery as rule. And this is entangling the second of the double B scenery ones and make you subtract two from run and charge rules to a minimum of zero for units that are within one inch of enemy turning feature. So it means that uh, you'll for sure risk uh, if you take units to guard some terrains. If you want to charge, you have to move way away from the terrains. But it can become really quite interesting in this case. So I think that uh, it's really quite interesting. What I found interesting is that technically, if you make a run and you roll a one of the dice, technically you can move even worse than the complete moving if you dare not run. So it can become also quite fun in that case. But uh, it's really quite interesting if you plan to have the Terrence as a way to obstruct the movement of the enemy and so reduce their option to charge. So it becomes really quite interesting. Then we have the artifact of the realm that it's plate of perfect perfection that let you if a weapon used for an attack targets the bearer and that weapon has a rand of minus one change the rand characteristic for that attack to zero. So it means that you are uh, a sort of like the Saurus. So in your uh, the rand one on your model. So it's not bad. Okay, remember that uh, it doesn't decrease uh, the rand two or better. So remember such one, but surely it stay a really quite interesting protective one. And then we have an aggressive command ability for this realm, that is Living Blades, that let you use this command ability in the combat phase, and if you do so, pick one friendly unit wholly within 12 inch of a friendly hero, and until your next hero phase, add one to hit rows for attacks made with melee weapons, by that unit if it made charge move in that same turn. So remember that you have to charge to apply such a bonus, but it can become really quite interesting. Not the best of the command abilities, but surely quite interesting one. And then we had the realm of beast Gur, that it's really quite interesting. And uh, I suggest you, if you are going to play the face sheeters, uh, to take this. And if you have luck in playing on this realm with the flesh eaters, it's a really quite amazing one. Moreover, if you are going to play the Christgore Gore once, because it's something that uh, it's uh, a really perfect one for those allergies one. So pay attention. And the spell about this realm, it's wild form that let you add five plus if successfully cast to a friendly unit within, not totally, but within 12 inch of the cast invisible to it and add two to run and charge rules made for that unit until the start of your next zero phase. So it's the opposite of the entangling of as a realm escape feature that we've seen for the realm of metal. It's really quite interesting and really quite amazing because it let really to bring your forces close to your enemy really quite soon and so I suggest you if you're going to play with this to pay attention with armies that are quite aggressive because in this realm they gain quite a lot of bonus. And then we have the realm escape feature that it's savage land and add the rule deadly to all the channels including your one remember and deadly it's that you roll a dice for each unit that finish a normal wood a charge move within one inch of any deadly terrain features and on one that unit suffered d3 mortal wounds so because it's finishing remember that you can move out or stay there without moving and you not suffer such options so it's really quite interesting and uh, i think that uh, can be really a way to control a bit uh, the amount uh, that you can gain because if you place your units in the shiny elements at least you have an option to make damages before the enemy itself arrive. So it can be a sort of defensive way, so pay attention. 
And then we have the artifact that it's quite interesting because it let you reroll charge rolls for the bearer. So remember that it's something that you have to take note. It's a saving, at least for your model that has such artifact, the use of the command ability for World to Victory. So it's like having a command point free user for such model. Okay, it's only if you charge, but surely it stay really quite an interesting artifact. So I suggest you, if you're going to play with Gur coming from, really to pay attention because this is really an important artifact to take note. Moreover, if the model that you are going to use has the, I can say, the option to really be lethal in close combat so that you can bring it really quite faster. So... It's really quite an amazing one. And then we had the command ability Feral Roll that you can use in your hero phase. And if you do so, you can pick one friendly monster keyword one. Wholly within 12 inch of a friendly hero. So remember that the monsters are really quite big. So it's not so much wholly within 12 inch. And until the end of the battle round, when you look up a value on that modest damage table, that monster is treated as if has suffered zero wound. So it's quite similar to the spell of the Lord of the Madness for the Flesh Eaters, Monstrous Vigor. Simply this is shorter, but it's not bad because you can use this really quite in an interesting way because you can, if you are able to play in Gur, to have ulterior ways to play with, so it becomes to be quite interesting uh, common ability because you can, if you go to play the flesh eaters, for example, to have the spell, if it passed or not, but you have also the common ability, so you can have two models uh, gaining such ability. It's uh, not bad at all, it's really quite interesting. Obviously, you have to be have uh, monsters in uh, your army, so you remember that there is uh, such limitation, but it's really quite interesting one. And then we had the Realm of Life Giran, where we have the spell that it's Shield of Form, that it's really quite interesting, because with a cast value of 5+, plus, you can pick, if successfully cast, a friendly unit within 18 inch, bully within 18 inch of the cast visible to it, and until your next hero phase, any enemy unit that finish a charge move within 3 inch of that unit, suffer the free mortal wounds so it becomes really quite amazing because it's a protective damaging so it's quite interesting the same friendly unit cannot be picked as the target of this spell more than once per turn and it's scored in this way because otherwise you have a unit that will be unchargeable because you suffer too many mortal wounds simply trying to charge it and it can create a really shield one so it's a really good spell and then we have the Realm Skate feature that it's perfect for the Realm of Life. It's Verdant Land and it applies the healing Shannery rules to all the Shannerys. And this rule, it says that at the start of your hero phase, roll a dice for each friendly unit that is within one inch of any healing target feature. So all the ones. So you are going really to play both you and your opponent really quite close to the channels to use this one so that on a six you can heal the three wounds allocated to that unit remember that it applies only to unit that has multiple wounds you can't resurrect model because there is not the option about so remember there is such different but surely it's really quite interesting one so it's something that i suggest you to take note because uh, it can uh, if you're going to play elite units that are more than one wound it can be really quite interesting to at least uh, resist battle so quite interesting one and uh, if it happens that you're going to finish to play in the realm of life uh, it's something that uh, you have uh, really to play i don't say safe but pay attention to which unit of you and your opponent is close to shenic elements because uh, can be really quite uh, a saving one because uh, it can make that uh, a lot of models can be better saving uh, the things because uh, they can heal wounds so 
it's quite interesting and uh, not so sure because it's on a six, but uh, it can be interesting. And then we have the artifact that it's ever spin theater that in your hero phase you can heal one wound allocated to the beer. It's uh, nothing special, but it's always interesting. It can be applied quite easily to models that uh, you are sure that are going to be in combat uh, or that risk to be targeted uh, from far, so you want that you have a saving measure. So it can be really quite interesting one. I repeat, it's nothing special, but with the missing of the Malin Sorcery Artifact, it becomes really quite important. So if you are going to play in the realm of life, uh, it's something that you have to take note. And then we have the command ability that it's command the land that let you use this command ability at the end of your hero phase. And if you do so, one friendly hero can attempt to cast Shield of Thorn, the spell of this realm. And even if they are not a wizard, the keyword wizard unit, they can try to cast such spell, even if it has already been casted in the same hero phase. And remember that you can use the same combat abilities more than once. So you can make multiple units and different places on the field from different heroes try to cast such spell. So it's really a breaking because it lets you to recast multiple times the same spell even from ones that are not mages. Really quite interesting. And if that hero is a wizard, using this command ability allows them to attempt to cast Shield of Thorn in addition to any other spell that they already attempted to cast, even if the Shield of Thorn has been attempted the same turn. So it's amazing, because it means that it doesn't consume, if it's a mage, your usage. So it's a free, usage of the spell not bad at all because it's amazing even if you're not going to use the spell itself you have a free spell okay you are going to consume command points remember this but it means also that you are quite free to use it's good really good and then we have the realm of light with the spell purity of defense that with a casting value of pet plus, let you pick a friendly unit wholly within to a range of the cast and visible to them, and the roll save rolls of one for attacks that target that unit until the start of your next zero phase. It's a way to have a second mystic shield, the base spell about rerolling the same. It's the same, simply change quite a lot the distance, but it's a way to double the mystic shield spell. So it's not so great, but it's not bad at all. Surely it has to be something that you can have in mind. And then we have the Realmscape feature that it's amazing. It's Dazzling Land that lets you add the mystical rule to all the field, to all the scenarios. And this mystical one, it's that you roll a dice each time you allocated a wound or a mortal wound to a model within one inch of a mystically terrain feature. And on a six plus, a wound or a mortal wound is negated. So it's like having the save of the death models. It's really quite amazing. On all the field, you only need to be within one inch of a terrain feature. It's quite amazing. But you have also to remember the special rule that has been added with the General Handbook 2020 that I talk about also in the unboxing. And this that you cannot make more than one best roll excluding the rules to negate a wound, a mortal wound that has been allocated to a model. And if you could use more than one ability to negate allocated wound or mortal wounds, you must pick ability that you choose, only one. So remember that there is such limitation. So you can't have multiple saving. You have to remember such one, but surely it's something that uh, it's uh, anyway really quite amazing one. And then we have the artifact of this realm that it's sharing true blade that let you reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made with melee weapons for the, by the bearer. So it's not bad, it's nothing perfect, nothing good, but it's not bad at all. So 
it's something that I suggest you to try eventually because it's uh, if you hit good uh, it's a way to ignore at least the ones so not bad at least if you don't have other abilities or command abilities that you want to use to do the same and then we have the real command ability that uh, it's uh, all scene enlightenment that let you use this command ability in your hero phase and if you do so pick one friendly unit wholly within 12 inch of a friendly hero and do not apply the cover modifier to save rows for attack made by that unit until the start of your next hero phase. Okay, the opponent unit has to be in cover to apply such one, but surely being able to negate the cover, so it means that your end, it's, if you have one, it's applied completely, and the opponent, it doesn't have bonuses to the saves, so I think that it's quite good at the end as a command ability, a bit depending by how the opponent units are positioned, but surely not bad at all. And then we had the realm of death, Shaish, and this is quite peculiar because it's associated mainly to the endless spells, and we can find particularities from the spell itself that it's ripples of the necroquay that has a casting value of 7 plus and if successfully cast until the end of that phase add one to casting rolls made for friendly wizard if casting roll is for endless spell so it means that you have to attempt this one before to try to cast an endless spell to add some bonuses to that casting so surely it's really quite uh, interesting spell uh, if you're going to use the endless spells uh, in your army. And the Realmscape feature is also related about endless spells. In fact, it's add nullification to all the scenarios. And nullification works in the enemy hero phase. If any hero from your army are within one inch of any nullification terrain feature, so all the scenarios in the field, because it's about the Realmscape feature, one of them can attempt to unbind one spell in the same manner as a wizard, and if they can already unbind the spell, they can attempt to unbind one spell additional one. So you can attempt to unbind two spells. In addition, an end spell that is set up or finish a move within one inch of any nullification terrain feature is dispelled. So it's really quite amazing. So it means that you can use the terrain feature themselves to prevent the ender spells. So if you are going to be inside a terrain feature, you are really safe from the ender spells. So really quite an interesting one. So something that you have to take note when you are going to play, both that you are going to attack using ender spells or you are going on defense. So pay attention. The artifact of Shaish is instead Grave Sand Brooch that let you reroll save roll of one for attacks that target the bearer. So it's uh, an automatic mystic shield. And uh, so it's not bad, it's not good. Uh, anyway, it's uh, something that uh, it's a saving. So I suggest you to take note eventually because uh, I remember you that uh, you don't have any more the Malin Sorcery ones. So about saving can be really quite suitable. And then we had the command ability of the Rion, that it's Amethyst Aura, that let you use this command ability in your hero phase, and if you do so, pick one friendly unit wholly within 12 inch of a friendly hero, and until the end of the battle round, roll a dice each time you allocate a wound or a mortal wound on that unit, and on a 6, that wound or mortal wound is negated. So it's quite similar to the effect of mystical for the realm of light but the problem is that the the farmers that should gain many more using this realm they had definitely minus uses and uh, remember that uh, you have the rule that i talked about before so you can't have more saves uh, to prevent uh, the damage from this uh, wounds that you suffer or mortal wounds so it's not so useful for the death armies and i think that it's uh, something that uh, it's a pity because uh, it's not so great but anyway for every other army i think that it's really quite good 
And then we had the Riemo Shadow Ulgu, that in many sources was one of the best, and uh, I don't think that it's quite far now. Because, for example, if we see about the magic, we had the Judgment of Shadow, that with a casting value of 7+, plus, you can pick one enemy unit within 12 inch of the cast and visible to it, so not quite far, but not bad at all, and roll 7 dice. For each roll that is less than the unit and modified save characteristic, that unit suffer one mortal wound, and if that target has a modified save characteristic of zero, so it doesn't have a save, one mortal wound for each two plus instead. So it means that you fail only on one, so it's perfect in that case. And uh, I think that it's really quite uh, an amazing spell, because it means that you can really kill units with a low save. It's like having tendrils that continues to kill anyone. So, wow, really quite a big spell. Because if you go to see, it's one of the spells that potentially can do the most damages from these realms. So, not bad at all. And then we have the realmscape feature that apply overglow to all the shining elements. And it means having back one of the features of Ulgu in the previous money sorcery and so on rules. In fact, Overgrow makes that the models are not visible to each other if an imaginary straight line 1 mm wide drawn between the closest point of two models crosses over more than one inch of any overgrown turning feature. So it means that if two models are separated open enemy models are separated by a future terrains that more than one inch wide, the models can't see each other, so it's really quite amazing. Obviously, this scenario rules does not apply if either models can fly because they can see each other, so it's really quite a good interesting feature that I have for this terrain, so it's something that if played correctly can save the shooting can save from uh, charging and so on, so it's really quite an amazing one. And then we have the Realm Artifact that is Trickster's Foil, that lets you reroll wound rolls of one for attacks made with a melee weapon by the bear. So it's nothing special, but I want to remember you that you don't have anymore the Malin Sorcery Artifacts. So this one that it was an effort that it was quite common, now it not anymore so so or you have an artifact that you have yet from your personal ones of your army that you can use with such effect or it's something that you can evaluate because it can help you to make more wounding so it's not bad and then we had the realm command ability on me that it's applicable only once per battle and at the end of your movement phase and if you do so, pick one friendly unit wholly within 18 inch of a friendly hero, remove that unit from the battlefield, and set it up again, wholly within 6 inch of that friendly hero and more than an inch from any enemy units. It means that technically you can move in that movement phase that unit of 24 inch maximum, a bit more because it depends by the size of the base. Uh, if you want to remember that I have a video that I link in the description about what I mean for the ranges. So it becomes really quite interesting. Okay, once per battle, but it can means that you can conquer an objective, that you can save a unit from a combat, that you can transport to conquer some uh, quarter of the field or so on, or simply to try to charge because you have to be more than an inch from an enemy, but you can still try to charge that enemy unit, so it's up to you, but it's not bad at all, it's quite strategic even if limited to only one for battle, so I think that it's really quite amazing command ability. So what to say about these realms, I think that they are really quite interesting. The artifacts are really quite, uh, I can say, normal, so you have to think if they are worth and eventually when you choose the army that you are coming from, except that you can gain a lot from the theme, so you can really evaluate it, uh, how you paint your models, but the main thing is about the rules, and remember that you don't have any more the Malin Sorcery book, so the artifacts there. Not having them, it means that your options 
from the option that you can use it means also that you have to understand from where you want that your army comes and can change a lot instead about playing on the realms i think that being able to play in a realm change a lot based on what army you are going to use because you can gain quite a lot or suffer quite a lot so it's something that i think that you should generate casually because you don't have any advantage and i think that it's really quite uh, interesting that way anyway i think that these realms are at the end quite balanced and you have to play them a lot to understand all their i can say pros and cons so that you can really estimate them and really appreciate them anyway they're really good and remember that you have you must use the realms when you play so have fun anyway from dino mode it's everything i invite you to put a like on this video to subscribe to the channel to ring the bell and to comment the vi this video if you are interested in something about this video or you want to suggest me some arguments for other videos i hope to see you again to the next time